Happy Thursday, y'all. And it's day 31 of Walk with Winston. And I'm back to the scene of the crime. Five weeks ago, we started this video series on a Wednesday in Reston. And that's where I am today. We are, uh, see, I'm in the middle of a, an extended road trip uh, away from my beloved Tampa. And uh, this week, this past week, I have been in Virginia to celebrate my dad's birthday. And today and yesterday, uh, yesterday and today, I'm up here in Ruston to uh, meet with our exec team from, from Frontstream and to help chart the next quarter or the next few quarters of our, our work together. Uh, so I've been out on my walk here for a little bit. And it finally dawned on me, dawn, ooh, that's a bad one since it's just breaking, but uh, it finally dawned on me why I love this time of day so much, the transition from darkness into light. And that is what I've really been enjoying uh, about this time of day. So 30 minutes or so ago, it was really, really dark. And all you could see was a few, just a few steps in front of you. Um, if there weren't any additional lights coming from businesses or street lights or street corners, you could just see just a, a few steps in front of you. And now gradually as the dawn is breaking, um, my path is becoming more and more illuminated and I can see a greater distance. I'm a visual person, I love vistas. I love being able to see long distances. It's very consistent with my personality that's primarily future oriented to be able to see and create a future of my dreams is, is something I've always uh, uh, worked on in terms of something I wanted to do and feel most comfortable in. So this transition from darkness, and so for me, darkness, sometimes the metaphors I use for darkness are confusion, um, lack of clarity, lack of vision. I associate those with darkness where I'm, where I'm feeling these kind of things about emotions, about my future. And so, um, so, you know, every day, God sets up, has set up the world that we transition from darkness into light. And I just love, love, love that metaphor because in the midst of our transition, and particularly as we work together to um, change our mindset about change, we are uh, really working towards... Um, getting out of darkness and into more clarity and more light. And so I guess that's why I so identify with this time of day because I love that transition. I love when a spark of ingenuity or creativity or insight removes that fog, removes that darkness, and I could begin stepping into a brighter future. So that's not my topic today, but it was just an insight I got as I started my walk this morning. How can we remove that confusion, that those blocks that only allow us to see just, I mean, sometimes we're just walking in complete darkness because we can't see a path. We can't see an outcome that is more favorable than the one that we're in. Well, one thing that we've been talking about this week is how words and our identity really can shape our future. I told the story a couple days ago on my dad's birthday about how his name, the naming, that, the name that he was bestowed by my grandmother, I think fundamentally changed the economic fortunes for him and for the rest of our family. And um, and how it certainly affected me as I incorporated the legend of that story into my own life. 
I thought, well, goodness, <laughs> if I, my namesake is the guy who owned the Hope Diamond and is famous around the world, certainly I don't have to settle for, you know, a rural, um, marginally getting by lifestyle. I, and I have been tremendously blessed in my life to have stepped into some opportunities, sometimes created some opportunities, but stepped into opportunities that have really given me an opportunity to travel and see so many interesting places, work with so many interesting people. And I have seen a ton of places in the U.S. Uh, over the years because of the work that I have taken on, the opportunities that I've been afforded. And I, growing up on a, a small rural street in Virginia with four houses, I could never have imagined that growing up. So the topic today is how our identity can help us remove some uncertainty in our transformational journey. Yeah, one of the big blocks, I think, in transformation is this feeling of uncertainty. You know, what we're in today is known to us. <clears throat> we may be uncomfortable. We may not like it. It may not be serving our highest and best needs, but it's familiar and therefore creates a sense of certainty and sometimes security in what we're experiencing. And so to change that means we have to let go of those, you know, we're on the trapeze and we've got to let go of our bar to swing in midair and grab the bar on the other side. And so that process of moving from certainty into uncertainty can be very debilitating for folks. Certainly is for me. And so, how we see ourselves, the confidence we have in ourselves to be resilient, to have come through other seasons of our life where we've moved from an uncertain, well, moved through this period of uncertainty in our lives, I think we can draw great courage and great strength from those periods because we, it builds a resiliency in us and a confidence in us that we can take on the next challenge. We can step out of darkness into a light. A pathway begins to light in front of us because we've done it before. It gives us a lot more confidence to do it again. So for example, um, in my life, I have been, I've gone through adversity like many of you have gone through. I went through a season, middle part of my career, where I was, I'd made a, I'd made a decision that really didn't probably turn out for my benefit at the time. I was, I was really on top of the world at, uh, at a local United Way in Louisville. I was working with a great mentor. We were achieving great results. And because my ego got in the way and I felt I was being treated unfairly, I ended up leaving a job probably prematurely and set out on my own to be a CEO of a smaller United Way back home in Virginia. It was a huge growth spurt for me to do that, uh, to make that change. And because I'd made that change, it led to another opportunity in Kentucky to be the CEO of another United Way. And in a lot of regards, that one decision to leave Louisville set me on a path where, in some regards, derailed what would have been a very promising United Way career because just the way United Ways work um, it's harder for 
the boards of a bigger city to take what you've done in a smaller market as seriously as if you'd had a line roll in a bigger market, you can always come down and be uh, a chief in a, in a smaller market. Probably made that move a little too early in my career. But the cool thing was that Lexington opportunity exposed me to some really cool volunteers from IBM who opened my eyes to a whole different way of doing back office services and really opened my eyes to saying, you know, what's really important here is what we do in the community and the back office functions can be admirably and skillfully done by those who really focus on that. That changed the trajectory of my life getting involved with those volunteers. But my ego got in the way once again and caused a significant rift with my local United Way. And I was gently asked to depart from that organization. A very dark period because for the first 18 years of my life, my whole identity was tied up in United Way. And when that door was shut, I couldn't really imagine what I would do next. It was a dark period. I was scared. We immediately put the house on the market. We knew we'd have to get our expenses under control. Um, and it was probably the scariest part of my early 30s. To, to have lost a career that you had invested yourself in and I had completely tied my identity to. But in that darkest moment, there was a light that began to expand. And because I had been exposed to these folks from IBM who absolutely convinced me that there were other more capable organizations that could help me with my back office services. I'd taken the step to do that, to implement that in my Lexington experience. And that project got the attention of other United Ways in the region. In just a, a few months, I was hired to share that expertise with a group of United Ways in our region. And that little project morphed into what became the country's first and largest social enterprise, nonprofit owned and managed by a group of United Ways to provide technology backend services to United Ways. Would I have ever imagined that as a career option for me? Mr. Please take my processing. <laughs> Please help me, somebody else do this work for me. Don't make me do this work. Um, no, I would not ever imagine that. But what that season did for me was built into me a resiliency and an understanding of how I'd once identified myself didn't lock me into a forever identity. And so as you think about the transformation that you're on, What are those experiences in your life that you could draw upon that can help you create a new identity, that can give you resiliency and confidence in the midst of your transformation? In this health journey I'm on, getting deep inside of me, drawing that, initial, that athlete that once existed inside of me in high school is going to be critical for my transformation because if I don't see myself fundamentally as an athlete in training, then I'm not going to step in to the healthy, vibrant, strong, flexible body that I'm going to need in this next season of life. I'm ready intellectually to serve in a new and vibrant way to show up with more energy, more excitement, more creativity, more problem solving 
that's what I desire in my life. I love that sort of thing. But it takes physicality to do that, in my view, to really get my brain clear and to have even more confidence about myself. I was always self-conscious about my weight and my height growing up. And so for me, shattering this mindset and incorporating this mindset is going to help me step into an uncertain season of life. You know, I'm, I'm coming up to a milestone birthday. I see a lot of people when they hit that milestone kind of check out of life. And I'm determined not to check out of life. I'm determined to step in and take full advantage of all the experiences I have built to date, which I believe every one of them are going to be useful in some way to others that I can help uh, by sharing inspiration, encouragement, hope, and experience so that together we can achieve more than we thought. So the moral of the story is look at your identity and see how it's either supporting your transformation or inhibiting your transformation. And as we step into a new identity, I believe it's going to create more certainty in terms of how that transformation can and will come about for you in your life. I believe in you. I know you can do it. And together, we're going to change the world. So with that, you guys have a great Thursday. And I will see you tomorrow from the Tampa International Airport for a secret destination for this weekend. With that, have a great Thursday, y'all. Take care. Bye.